Okay, so we're uh, back at it. We're doing a video. This is uh, part two to the uh, story of GSL, Guardian Safe Lock. We're a quarter mile down the road from our current location. We didn't move very far, but we've been out of this location now, I would say, for about a year and a half. So it's been a while, and, uh, and this is it. So if you look at it, it's basically just the size of the two main doors and two little side windows on it. So we're gonna go ahead and, uh, and take you inside the old location and kind of show you where it all started and uh, explain, the, explain the process of how we actually got into the first shop. So we're inside the, our old showroom, which we'll show you in a minute as we pan out. But uh, let's we'll get, continue off where we left off last, last episode. So basically I left off that we designed the logo and showed you how that came about and how I got into getting my first truck and getting on the road and how I was able to generate leads by going business to business and things like that. So basically um, I hired my first employee, Bobby, about two years in or two and a half years in. And then maybe a year after that, I went ahead and hired Tim. Now Tim was actually one of my, he was my banker at Chase Bank. And he'd been hitting me up for years saying, hey man, one day I want to work for you. you know, let me know if I could ever come on and work for you. And I just barely kept in touch with him a little bit. And I was needing another person. And ironically, he called me. We started talking and he's like, oh yeah, I've been doing locksmithing for the last year. I was like, oh, that's fantastic. I didn't even know that. And uh, he wasn't working for a very reputable company. That's why he wanted to get out because he realized that he was actually working for kind of a scammer. Not that he was scamming people, but the owner was doing fishy things. And anybody in our industry knows that scamming is a big problem. So he was constantly being told to drive across town to do a $50 job and things like that. The guy was telling him to take his own vehicle everywhere and he was not happy. He felt that he was feeling a little dirty basically. And he's like, hey, I want to get with a legitimate company. Right. You know, and I said, well, perfect timing, man. I need somebody. And then come to find out the one area that he was mostly doing all his work in was the area, one of the areas that I had the biggest weakness in. And that was an automotive. <clears throat> so he came on and was like, hey, we can start to get an automotive. You need to get these basic keys, maybe this kind of a programmer. Here's where you cross-reference this. Here's where you do that. And he got me enough information. We said, all right, well, I do know how to like rekey cylinders and program keys at a very basic level, but let's do it. Let's bring in automotive because it could be a lot of money for us. Well, automotive is huge for us right now. And inside of our shop, it's probably 50% of all the money we make in the shop, I would say, or maybe 40% goes to automotive. And then the other, you know, another 30 or 40% goes to safes and then the rest is all miscellaneous stuff. But we got Tim on, Tim, uh, Tim Pham. He uh, basically brought us in, showed me what programmers to get. We got some very basic programmers and started making automotive keys. We stopped turning down all those jobs and started converting those into cash. So we uh, went from there and before you know it, we're, we're starting to do automotive. And then we started looking for a a shop, I was like, well, we're going to need to get a shop. Uh, and then I ended up losing Tim, actually, because he had some issues going on in his family. He had to take off and wasn't able to continue on. But during that year, he bridged that gap and got automotive. So now we're confident doing automotive. So I was looking for a solid tech. I needed somebody I can count on. Um, we've already brought automotive into the fold. Now we're getting a little comfortable with it. And I wanted to get into access control more. I needed somebody that's smart enough to say, hey, read all this, figure it all out, and hopefully you can handle it, right? And we're gonna try getting into access control more, which I already had some experience, but very basic standalone systems, keypad, electric strike, basic things. So brought Aaron in, and Aaron, once we hired him he, from the ground up, we brought him up and he, he was picking up access control, and he kind of brought, bridged that gap for us to where we got comfortable enough selling access control products and, and doing full systems. So those two employees right there are very, uh, very important because Tim brought in, got us in the door with automotive and shot us off from there. And Aaron helped us get into access control. I just basically had to pay him, you know, on the clock, let's just figure this out, let's learn it together and let's just do it. And that's what we did. So those two guys helped bridge those two trades into our company. So uh, they were very important. <clears throat> Aaron worked with me for, through this shop till, till nearly about a year before we left the shop. So he was with me almost four years. But anyway, after we got those two people and uh, we learned those two trades and implemented that into our business, we were looking for a shop. So this is the shop that we're in right now. We finally found one. We needed one that was budget friendly. Maybe one we could put some safes in and sell. And uh, I think it was, say last April, we left, which was 2019. So it was around the end of, the beginning of 2016, I wanna say is when we got this shop. 
or the end of 2015, somewhere in there. Um, anyway, we got the shop and then we had to say, okay, we have very little room, which we'll show you in a second just how much room we had to work with here. Uh, but we needed to maximize it for as many products as we could in here and make it look as professional and nice as we could. So this is where we are now. And so we went into this shop, assigned a three year lease. So I'm gonna tell you about that in a second, but let's just kind of tour around here. So you're looking at our front door. We, this was actually a window. We covered it up to make it look good. So we put an extra wall here because <laughs> we had so limited space. Turned all this wall. This was all different miscellaneous products that we had in this wall. And then if you look at the wall, he was already showing you on there, where it says guard all. We had all our safes here. So we had like a, a tier or some safes would be here, and then there's a pedestal here. We put safes on top and then safes on bottom. So we had safes running down this wall with maybe one gun safe there and one gun safe there. So we had like two, maybe three gun safes is all we can put in here. And they were the small ones too, they weren't even big. And then maybe another 20 safes that were, you know, average size that were in here. So the biggest problem we had was being able to become a reliable place for someone to purchase a safe because if you can't put your hands on it, you can't see it, and we can only carry so much in here, it kind of put us in a spot where like, yeah, we do safes, but you know, you won't be able to see it until we order it and get our hands on it. You can see how these are built, but the physical, putting your hands on the one you actually wanted was an issue. So we had three years here after about six months, we started to realize we're gonna, we're gonna need to move out of this spot once we're done with our lease, we're just outgrowing this place. So business was excellent. So anyway, this was the showroom here. You wanna follow me through, I'll walk you through. Had the logo painted up here, of course, when someone walked in, first thing they saw was that. We had a, we had a door here. We actually took it with us because it had the Schleg Primus breakdown. I had one of these things on here that broke down the cylinder. Took the door off, cut it down. It's actually on the wall, on the partner wall. It shows how the Schleg cylinder is, but that used to be the door here. Anyway, this was our counter area. We'd have one person here, maybe one guy here. If we had more than three or four customers in here, we're all, all over each other because this is where the machines were. Very small area. I mean, this is big. This is smaller than my office now. So and this is where all the action in the front went down. So we had customers out there and right here's where we handled them. Then you'd walk into this room. <clears throat> and this is uh, my old office slash Brian's office slash whoever we needed office. So we had our camera system, the sound system here, and Brian would sit right here in his desk and handle this. And then my desk was like an L shape here. And I'd sit here and Brian would be there. And this is where we ran it. And then as we had techs in the field and we started to need people in the shop, we hired a couple different people um, and uh, we ended up putting their offices back here, which I'll, I'll take you back and show you. We had quotes on the walls and things like that. We had our bathroom here. This is our sales board, kept updated all our sales performance. <clears throat> and then back here was our, our parts room. We had all our parts and shelves here and wrapped around the corner. This was a workbench with all our key overstock up here. And then uh, as you come around the corner here, we had shelving running down the side. Of, uh, of all parts, and then we had like a, an island wall right here on both sides, we had stuff in that. And then it was this open area, we'd have our meetings and things like that back here. So, <clears throat> we stayed between, I think 20, 2016 to 2019 was in here. <clears throat> and then, uh, then we ended up hiring some other people, of course, and then Randall, who's recording right now, he, uh, he handled, I basically hired him and I was like, hey, you know, I think we could do the YouTube channel. I think we start making these videos. He had very minor experience. He said, yeah, I think I've done some stuff like that in the past. We can figure it out. So slowly we went from making simple videos to higher quality videos to buying better machines and better recording devices and everything we could to keep stepping that level up. And that's what you're seeing now as part of the YouTube channel. So it all started here. Matter of fact, this is where Randall would sit. He would sit right here and there'd be stuff all over here and keys all up here and just make his little cubby hole and work right there and create the video. So. Um, <clears throat> when we left here, I believe we had, there was like eight of us, I would say there's eight of us, there's 10 of us now, uh, but there are eight of us, most of them were field techs, but it was all parts back here, not even room for offices really, people just kind of sitting where we could, and we said, hey man, we need to get a bigger location, start looking, found the location which we're in now, and that's kind of how we ended up there, but getting from from no shop to a shop was a big deal because then you got to figure out, well, what am I going to fill the walls with? So you have to go and look and find everything that's, you know, demo ready that you can put up on pegs and stuff and make it look nice and put up things that can show a little bit of everything that you offer. So that was challenging. It was our first shop. I didn't have no experience seeing that. And uh, 
well, we just figured it out and that's how we've made it so far. But um, after we moved in here and we brought in the extra trays, the automotive, we fine tuned that, we got better at that. We got all the better programmers, all the better machines and everything we needed. Uh, and we spent from April 2019 to December of 2019 building out the new location the best we could. We'd work all day and then we'd go over on the weekends or we'd go after work and work two or three hours and clean up or take the floor out or, or whatever. We did all kinds of things. So this is where it started. This was our old back, our old back room. We had many meetings back here. So uh, it's pretty cool that we get to come back in here after all this time too and see it because it has been about a year and a half. Um, we had quotes all over the walls, most of them they've taken down, but because someone else is going to move in. But we still have one that we still go by today, which is we're not here to take apart, we're here to take over. So that's kind of uh, what we've used as our um, know, battle cry, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of our motivation is, hey, we're not here in this industry just to compete with everybody. We're here to set the standard and push the, the trade forward. So uh, hopefully, Everybody else falls in line with that and we can make this trade even better than it is. And uh, hopefully people can actually start to know a little bit about what locksmiths actually do, which we try to share that information because it's kind of the first thing everybody says every time is, oh, you open cars or you pick a lock or something like that. That's that much of what we do. So anyway, after getting to this location and we open it up, we outgrew, we started looking for the other location. Um, that's what we'll, we'll talk about in the third episode getting to there and then we're still going to have that fourth video which probably won't be a part one two three it's probably just going to be another video all together it's going to show you the final product of our store which we're very close now we're finishing graphicking the windows we got some graphics to do in the back hallway and meeting room and once that's done i'd say we're we're complete then we're going to get the store looking really nice and do a grand uh tour of the sh of the, uh, the new shop that we have and put it on youtube for you to see so we appreciate all the support as usual. Uh, thanks for tagging along again and get, coming back down and sharing some of our memories with us. Uh, it's been a long journey. It's been uh, tough, but everything we said we we're gonna do, we've done. And we plan on doing many, many great things. So uh, hopefully as the years go on, you get to see all this content. You can uh, feel like you're part of the journey and part of the reason why we made it this far because we count on viewers like you and subscribers and, and people to engage us and uh, show interest. So thank you for tagging along. Thank you for subscribing. If you are subscribing, please subscribe. Hit the like button, or if you want notifications, hit the bell icon. You can see us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we're on all the social media platforms and LinkedIn. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll see you next episode.